The reality is that self-harvesting BSF bins just don't produce enough larva. They're often way too deep, they don't control moisture well, and they get too hot because of all the decomposing food waste. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to fix all these problems and increase your larva yield tenfold. My name is Sam Magnuson, and I'm an engineer turned BSF farmer. And I've spent the last three years designing BSF systems that grow more larva and less space. And now I'm here to share what I've learned. My frustrations with single bin BSF systems go way beyond not producing a lot of larva. They can often stink really bad and they can form a big layer of muck on the bottom, which is a real pain to clean, even if they have spouts to drain off any excess fluid. The ultimate solution is to move towards a rack and bin system, but there are ways to fix some of the problems with the self-harvesting BSF bins. But first, we need to understand what conditions allow BSF larva to thrive and why the single bin systems aren't providing it. All right, so what kind of environment do BSF larvae really need to thrive? Well, the first is they need a good aerobic environment, which means they're probably going to feed very close to the surface of any kind of food waste so they can get the oxygen that they need. And likewise, if moisture gets out of control and things become anaerobic because things are too wet, they're really going to struggle and they may even leave. In addition to this, while they like warm environments, if things become too hot because of decomposing food waste, they're not going to like that. Your larvae are most likely in the first 10 to 15 centimeters of the surface of any bin. So what is that extra depth doing? It's creating extra heat from microbial activity and it's creating anaerobic conditions from moisture collecting near the bottom of the bin. This is not ideal for your BSF larva. Raising BSF larva in a really deep bin is kind of like raising a bunch of fish in a really deep pond. Your fish are generally going to thrive within the first few meters of water. And likewise, your larvae are going to thrive within the first 10 to 15 centimeters of food waste. So when it comes to fish farming, rather than digging one really deep pond, you're better off having a bunch of shallow ponds because it's all about surface area and oxygen exchange. So this is why when it comes to BSF larva production, Rack and bin systems will always outperform single deep bins. When we look at rack and bin systems, we see they produce a good aerobic environment because of all the surface area. They help control moisture because of all the good airflow and they reduce the amount of heat generated by microbial activity because all the bins are shallow. So if rack and bin systems are so great, why are self-harvesting BSF bins being promoted as the answer for a lot of people getting into BSF farming? The reality is that self-harvesting bins are a good place to start. They require minimal effort, they're simple to set up, and you can be harvesting larva in your sleep. But if you wanna produce more larva in less space, moving towards a rack and bin system is really the answer. The reality is it can be a real challenge to both design and manage a BSF system well. And that's why I created a guide to take you from a single bin unit to a rack and bin system step by step. So if you're interested, check out my ebook in the description below. So the question really is, can we improve the single bin units to get rid of some of these problems? And the answer is, we absolutely can. Pretty simple, now that we know what the larvae need to thrive. Use shallower bins, add as much ventilation as possible, and add a base layer of dry carbon material that can help absorb some of the moisture that percolates down. This will help prevent anaerobic conditions, extra heat buildup, and give the larvae the oxygen they need. This will take your single bin systems and make them both easier and more enjoyable to manage. The largest barrier for me to growing more larvae more consistently was knowledge. So if you want a complete guide for growing more larvae in less space, Check out my ebook in the description below. And remember, if you find larvae crawling in your kitchen, you're probably doing something right. See ya.